be the best part of everybody's day. You know, like get on the floor and just, you know, put on a show. I'm just like, no, don't do it. It's a bad idea. You're not ready. And and a hundred percent of the time they just say, thanks. And then immediately open the second location. I don't want to be like Planet Fitness and have like more memberships than space. You know, so I, I make sure we have enough time slots so that everybody can get their two, three or four times a week in. Hello and welcome to Gym World Worldwide. I am your host, Sean Franklin, here with my friend, life partner, and your other host, Mateo Lopez, uh, sporting the new Gym World hat, uh, looking looking great, looking very Chad. And uh, we have a very special guest for you today, uh, Giancarlo Rainey of G Strength. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing well. It's uh, it's an honor to be here. I'm flattered that I was even asked to be here. This is this is great. Yeah, man. We interview people uh, from all different types of backgrounds. So we've talked to people who are like, I had a highfalutin finance job and I wanted to change lives, so I started a gym. Or like, I had a fancy marketing job and I hated it, so I wanted to change lives and I started a gym. Your background is way radder. So if I got this correct, like you didn't even know like gymming was a career and uh, you start off as like a Lyft driver, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. I, um, I, I kind of quit my job in uh, 2016, started driving Lyft to make ends meet. And, uh, you know, I started training people out of my mom's development out in Collegeville, PA. Uh, as well as I got an apartment in the city of, of Philadelphia and uh, it was a one bedroom apartment. I started, started training people one-on-one -on -one in that uh, bedroom of that apartment. So I like moved my bed to the living room slash kitchen <laughs> slash bedroom. So like people would walk in for their personal training session and they'd just see your bed and it's like, oh no, come in the back. This Yeah. Yeah. I just blew right <laughs> past it. I was like, I was, yeah, <laughs> Jim's back here. You know, <laughs> eyes on the prize. We just do that to make you feel safe, you know? <laughs> was a bit of a problem in the beginning, <laughs> but, uh, I would, um, my, my, my girlfriend now wife, uh, at the time was, um, was, uh, she, she did, was uh, a client. No, <laughs> like, we met. it worked out great. Make people feel less, uh, scared of the situation of coming into like a one bedroom apartment in Philly and being alone with this guy that they didn't know, you know? So, um, so you had front desk staff. I have front desk staff. <laughs> yeah, perfect, amazing. But your your passion for training that started earlier, right? You did what I I tried to do, what you did, uh, but kind of failed. But you actually you worked in a strength conditioning uh, like collegiate level, like you were a strength conditioning coach essentially, right? And then uh, went through the ranks that way, or, or how did it start? So I, I studied uh, clinical exercise science at Ithaca College, really close to Cornell. Uh, so I got to do my internship my senior year with the Cornell Strength and Conditioning staff. Um, great experience, learned a ton, uh, but ultimately just kind of decided the uh, the collegiate sector uh, just wasn't for me. I was just kind of seeing a lot of, um, you know, from friends in the industry, I've seen a lot of turnover, a lot of moving across the country. Uh, you know, knowing I wanted to, um, you know, start a family eventually and, you know, be in charge of my, be in control of my own destiny. I uh, decided I just should just start my own business and, and, uh, you know, worst case scenario, if I fail, I'll just be right back, you know, trying to do this. So, um, so I, you know, I took the shot, started lift driving and, uh, rest is history. <laughs> and so you were telling us you actually got some, you actually got some leads, like you had a system. So, so explain, explain for any enterprising personal trainer out there looking to become a gym owner one day, here's how you get paid to get leads, right? Most people think you got to pay for leads. No, 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 no. There's a, there's a deep strategy that we're unearthing for you. Some free alpha because you're a gym world listener on how you can get paid to get leads. So, so explain it to them. So 2016, I quit my job. I uh, started Lyft driving and, you know, I didn't have any clients. I just had an Instagram and some motivational quotes. Uh, so I would just drive around Philly with a clipboard attached to my back seat. Uh, that enabled some of my passengers to sign up for my email list uh, so that they can start getting fitness content from me. Um, you know, I, I didn't ultimately get any one-on-one -on -one clients from it, but I got a lot of online, uh, a lot of online client leads there just from driving around Philly and talking to people. But uh, 
but like you said, I was getting paid to do a job and, you know, it was just kind of icing on the cupcake that I got to market to them too. So then how did you actually get your first group of clients for the apartment or for the, uh, you know, the gym? So I, uh, I was fortunate to go to, you know, uh, two private high schools in uh, Philadelphia. So I had a pretty good network of people that could afford training. So what I did was I, I Facebook messaged everybody, you know, who I was friends with that still was in Philadelphia and just said like, Hey, I started my own personal training business. Are you interested in personal training? Just to, you know, put it simply. And, you know, 98% like, of no, I'm not, <laughs> uh, you know, another 1% said no. Uh, and then, you know, probably less than 1% actually took me up on it. But, you know, that got me like three or four clients. Um, some of them are still with me to this day. And, um, and yeah, it, it, uh, it, it's, it actually works, you know, better than most things, to be honest with you. Like I was very surprised with the amount of people that said yes. Um, cause it's just, you're, it's a cold, you know, it's a cold lead and you're just, you know, reaching out to somebody you were friends with at one point in your life. Maybe you went to grade school with them and you know, they're finally, uh, this is the first they're hearing from you in years. And, uh, next thing you know, they're in your apartment bedroom work, working one on one with you. <laughs> <laughs> gym owners love over complicating marketing man it's like you got so many people trying to do a hundred different things and it's like then you ask them how many conversations did you have today and it's like oh zero and it's like okay so you everything you've done this far is a waste of time like you just got to go out and ask a bunch of people yeah i will say the other thing was um uh thumbtack thumbtack also worked very well um, I don't know if that's still around or still still working, but it's definitely still around. I don't. I hate, but yeah, I'm. That makes sense. <laughs> that checks out. I, I'm sad. We were we operated a gym in Philly at the time you were doing your Lyft lead service, and that would have changed the trajectory of our lives if we were in your Lyft. Like we would have that would we would have talked about that for months. <laughs> and, I'm, I'm probably still going to talk about that for months, but um, all right. So we got some we got some leads. We got a little base. Mm -hmm. We're training out of the the dungeon. I'm assuming this is like used Craigslist equipment like this. You, you weren't like putting like a, like sore necks racks in your bedroom. Correct. Yeah. I was um, bartering for dumbbells. I was buying stuff on, you know, Facebook marketplace. And there was also like this really uh, cost efficient place in like Doylestown, I believe it was. I don't know if it's still around. It's called Jackie Boys Fitness. Um, it was basically this guy's garage out there and you would just go and get, like, I got a squat rack for like 250 and it was, it was solid. It could hold like 500 pounds. No problem. Jackie boy. Wow. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So how'd you end up, how'd you end up moving out the bedroom, you know, getting, get, cause every gym owner starting out wants to put their bed back in their bedroom. That's a, that's all, that's all we want as gym owners. We want to be able to, to put our bed back in our bedroom and buy, um, organic produce, you know, that's, that's a dream. So how, how'd you get the bed back in the bedroom and, and, and get the clients into a facility? So uh, by, uh, you know, fast forward a year and a half later, I have like 31 one-on-one -on -one clients in my apartment bedroom. I'm working like 60 hours a week. And, uh, you know, while my finances are in a much better situation, I, I hate my life. I, I, I'm stuck in my house, my apartment all day. And I'm like, man, was this, the goal was to be busy and this sucks. <laughs> right. You know? So what um, were you charging? Like anywhere from 35 to $60 an hour, which is super low for Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 But you're doing okay. Like you're probably making okay money there if you're doing 60 sessions a week at that rate. And your rent is a write-off. Like it's all your, yeah. 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 My rent was like, you know, 11, uh, 1400 bucks. And I was making like, I think I topped out at like 10 grand. And other than that, you don't really have expenses. <laughs> that's it. You should franchise that. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good model. <laughs> yeah, pretty so, good model. So, so we run like um, with uh, in partnership with this company, Two Brand. We, we run this thing called the State of the Industry, where we look at um, data across a, a set of fourteen thousand gym owners. And uh, this year, the median gym owner took home uh, like. Total all in after you add back their car, their rent, their health insurance payments. You want to take a guess? 30 grand. It was about 3,800 a month. So yeah, a little more than that. So, you know, just being a, being a, a, a kid with like a squat rack in your bedroom, you're doing like more than twice as good as the average gym owner. So it is not bad. And that took you, that took you a year, a uh, year and a half about. Yeah. I think it was, like, it was, um, I officially moved to Philly. October 2016. And then I moved out March 2018. 
February 2018. I'm just trying to explain that. Like, I'm just trying to I'm imagining myself at a bar getting the pitch from one of your clients to come train with. Yeah, no, this is guy G. Uh, yeah, and you go to his house and you, you walk past his bedroom. Don't worry, his girlfriend's the there. Bed. His girlfriend's his girlfriend there. is there. It's totally safe. She's she totally checks not me sketch. in. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, those are the days. And I it's remember. great. He's got huge yeah. bags under his eyes because he hasn't slept in like three weeks because all he does is train. He's focused. He's in the zone. But my um, back doesn't hurt anymore. So you got to come <laughs> check this guy out. I'm like, that's the, that was it. That was it. I mean, did I, you have I, a website? Like a I Google did. My Business or anything like that? I didn't have Google My Business, but I had a website. Um, I think, I think I was doing best with like my Facebook and Instagram page. Uh, I think that's that's really where people would like, you know, look me up to make sure I wasn't, you know, going. <laughs> I wasn't some creep with an apartment, you know, like that was actually murdering people. You know, <laughs> did you did you have do you have photos on your Instagram of the of the good old days? If you go to my personal Instagram, Real G Strength, and you scroll back to like 2017, yeah, you'll see you'll see those good old days. All right, um, I'm gonna try and cruise far, through but, that. I can probably so, find some good ones if, if you want me to just put that, uh, send that to you so you can put it in like the show notes later. But um, for sure, there's, there's no, we're going to put it right here at this moment. <laughs> boom. That's where it's that's the part right on yeah. the screen. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and you went from three to 30, I'm assuming word of mouth and then just hammering Instagram and asking a bunch of people to train with you. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, referrals were the big thing. Uh, you know, thumbtack helps a lot. Uh and yeah, just my just using my network, asking friends, family for for referrals, um, telling everybody that I was doing what I was doing, uh, talking about my goals. You know, talking about I want to open a gym one day. I'm going to do this, um, and uh, just getting people excited about the vision. I think was a big part of it. Like like my the people I was working with, they were like, okay, one day we're not going to go to this guy's apartment. We're going to go to a gym. You know? <laughs> right. They, felt they were along in. for the ride. Yeah. I think they believed me when I said that. So, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate that they, that they did. <laughs> so we leveled up out of the apartment. Uh, yeah. What was the first facility and, and what was that process like? So I was like, you know, as I, as I mentioned, I was miserable. So I was looking on Craigslist. I was looking on LoopNet, trying to find any sort of like commercial property that I could turn into a gym. You know, uh, Philly, uh, I was trying, I was in Washington Square with my apartment. So I was trying to stay in that general area. Um, and those areas, there's a lot of wood floors in commercial spaces around there. There's not a lot of things that are like, you know, this, this would be an ideal gym. <laughs> so, so I had to, you know, I had to eventually settle for a fabric shop that had wooden floors and it was 700 square feet. So I went from an 180 foot bedroom to a 700 square foot fabric shop. I laid some horse stall mats and some turf down on that. Uh, you can so right before you get to my apartment bedroom photos on my Instagram, you can see uh, the photos of this tiny space. Uh, we're not there anymore, but we were there for four years. Uh, it was on uh, South 4th Street between uh, Bainbridge and South. If you guys are familiar with that area, same block as Jim Stakes, um, <laughs> and uh, really oh, you got the drop in the knowledge. So, so this is like the walks of yours. You, you, Philly's old as shit. I don't think I appreciated that until we opened our gym there. But like, yeah, yeah you were like in this area, and like, here's the Liberty Bell, like not that right. far away. You know, that's old. That's some old stuff. I was like, uh, right all, on the all these little, all these little things, all these little uh, turquoise things that I think that just signifies something that's old as shit. And so it's just wood floor all throughout here. Yeah. And um, so I, I found this spot. I started talking to the landlord um, and I was, I mean, I, you know, we settled on like, okay, this is going to be the space, you know, we're going to move in. And I was, I was like, I'm also looking for an apartment too. If you got one upstairs <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, it's funny. You should ask <laughs> the place right above the gym is, is available next month. So he gave me like a hundred bucks off a month. I moved, me and my, my girlfriend, uh, moved, moved upstairs and, um, you know, we were there for, we were in the apartment for three years. We were in the gym for four years. What and, a ride or die. Yeah. She, yeah, she deserves awesome. that rock. If you, she had to live above the gym, yeah. what is, I mean, that that, my I, wife a nightmare. I tell that story about our relationship all the time. It's like, I, that's how I knew she was the one she was willing to put up with 
you know, like for 6 a.m. sessions in that apartment, she had to get up because like I didn't want clients like seeing her sleeping when they're showing up to work out. That's just it's not a very motivating image, you know, when you're showing up that early. And, you know, she she tolerated it. And she like, again, I guess I we never really formally talked about it, but I guess she saw the vision <laughs> and, and knew that I was going to make it work one day, and that it wasn't going to be like this forever. So, so she, she, she uh, put up with me. Our buddy and sometimes co-host Mark Fisher his okay. original Hell's Kitchen location, uh, they rented the apartment above that and him and his business partner, Mike Keeler, lived in it. And they used like the front half of the apartment as like an office as well. So that was like their corporate headquarters and where they lived. And man, I remember going there and one being jealous because it was like, oh, you just get to hang jealous. out with your boys all day, every day. This is amazing. Um, and two, like, I think they got pitched like three or four times to be on reality, like People wanted to film reality TV shows there because it was just so insane. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing yours was like a little, a slightly toned down version, you know, just based off of your branding, I could see less um, nudity on your website versus his, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it's still, yeah. still just living the dream there, right? A, that zero commute. That's amazing. Yeah. 25 seconds right down the steps, you know, unlock the door and I'm, I'm at work. Um, you know, it, it, it was great for the first year when I was doing all the training. Then eventually when I delegated uh, the mornings, hired a coach for the mornings, you, you'd get woken up, you'd wake up to deadlifts every every morning at 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. You know, floors travels up the building real, you know, real nice. Very familiar. <laughs> so was the original model, is it the same as it was before, like the small group personal training or was it different back then? Yeah, because it sounds like you were doing PT. Slightly different. Um, so I still had a lot of PT clients. Um, I made the mistake of when I was opening, right? So like I was doing all this one-on-one -on -one, and then I kind of pitched everybody on this small group model, which at the time was like nine people per class. Um, and uh, I, my revenue got cut in a third because the price was also cheaper than what I was charging for one-on-one. -on -one. So I made the mistake of, of uh, you know moving everybody to that right away. And then, um, you know, just <laughs> not, you know, not, not, uh, thinking ahead to the hit I was about to take. So my revenue went from like 10 grand to three grand overnight. Now I have this gym now I have all these expenses and I'm like, oh man, this is, uh, this is tough. This is, uh, you know, I, I did not know what I was getting myself into here with this commercial space. So, um, you know, I struggle with it for like a year and a half. We grow, you know, I'm able to make ends meet, but like, I definitely did not have a good model in place. And I think that, um, you know, I was, I was kind of fighting an uphill battle for a year and a half. Um, and then, you know, I've, you know, eventually I, um, I, I got so busy that I needed help and it turned into nine on two. I was training, I was paying a coach and, and myself, uh, you know, to, to run sessions. So, um, so no, the model was not always six on one. Uh, I, I started, you know, started with nine on two, realized that wasn't profitable. And then I think the thing that really um, in, uh, forced me to change was I joined Vince's mastermind. I saw a lot of people doing that small group model, but also uh, COVID kind of gave me this, uh, this opportunity to reset, right? Like we all got shut down and I was like, okay, what sucks about my business? Why is this not working? And I got the opportunity to reset, change some things, decided six on one was the way to go moving forward. And, uh, and yeah. Much better model. Uh, was able to profit a lot, a lot more that way. Uh, less staff, and, uh, and yeah, it was. Uh, it's been that way ever since. So let's like flash forward to today. Uh, you got two locations. You're opening up a third. Walk us through what that model is. How you package. How you price stuff. Like you know, let us know what, how you're thinking about your, your growth and, and what like a good location for you looks like. So we run small group personal training, uh, pretty much only that, um, if somebody really wants one-on-one -on -one training, we'll give it to them. And then we'll, you know, we'll do like a five pack or a 10 pack with them and we'll try to guide them towards a small group. Uh, but essentially a successful location looks like 120 members, uh, six on one, our pricing model is two, three, and four times a week. And uh, we use a, um, I'll go over the pricing for that. So two times a week, 
uh, to start is two ninety nine a month. Three times a week is three thirty nine a month, and then four times a week is three ninety nine a month. And uh, that's that's what we'll start with uh, when we open our third location, and then we just kind of raise prices based on you know how we're doing and you know, uh, you know certain things like the median household income of of uh, the neighborhood you know play a role as well. Uh, and then uh, we, we use a program template to kind of run that small group personal training model. Uh, essentially what that means for us is we have two tiers. We have blue and we have black. Now blue is like the program we put everybody who joins the gym on. It's a, it's a foundational program, full body, three days a week. And uh, it's just, you know, it's like your goblet squat, your dumbbell bench press, your kettlebell RDL, stuff like that. Or, you know, we're teaching them the, the very basics of training. We're usually dealing with people who are beginners and, you know, this might be the first time they've ever stepped in a gym. So we want to be conscious of that when we're building this program out. And then we have our black program for people who've just, most of the time, it's just people who've been with us longer and they showed up consistently for a number of years. And like now we need to challenge them a little bit more. Uh, so that has just more barbell variations and uh, more advanced protocols in general. And you'll see a little bit more, uh, our coaches will have a little bit more fun with the programming there. They'll get a little more creative and scratch that itch a bit. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's there for when we need it. You know, we, we don't want to just, you know, keep people doing the same things forever. And uh, I want, I don't want training to get stale for any of our members. So that's our way of uh, ensuring that doesn't happen. And you have people, so in the same session, you have people doing the blue and the black in the same time. And yes. And we let people do any day they want on any day of the week. So we have a three day program, in blue, a four day program in black, and anything could be happening on any day. Now, like Monday, pretty much everybody's doing day one. Uh, but by the time you get to like Friday and Saturday, there's this whole, you know, hodgepodge of things that could be happening, which. So which on is, a Friday, there could be six people in the session and each one of them could be do, like one of them could be doing black day two and then blue day three. And then this person over here is doing blue day four all, all at once. Yeah. And that's why we call it small group personal training, because they're truly getting um you know somewhat of a an individualized experience <laughs> there you go <laughs> so that is the fourth street space that's the 700 square foot space when we were starting out there you go you gotta update your jmb pictures there we go so how how does that work like i'm assuming the yeah this sounds really hard how, yeah so, that so sounds hard coach... how do you do that because how are they warming up together how are you doing barbell stuff that that sounds pretty tough especially with six i could see that with four but how are you making this work so uh we, we use team builder we have so they have the program on their phones uh we use a whiteboard it's also on the whiteboard and the coach is there to uh you know walk them through it um it's just something complicated but not too complicated kind of gives it, it, it makes for a lot of uh, touch points with the coaches and, and, and you really give that, that like personal training feel in the small group setting. Um, but yeah, I think it just, it, it comes down to, you know, tra training your coaches to, 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 to function, uh, you know, to, to, to function at a high level under pressure like that. It, it can get chaotic, especially when you have a lot of new people and especially on week one of a new block. But, um, I mean, you, you re if you have good retention, you have people who are, you know, staying with you for a long period of time. They start to learn. They start to become more and more self-sufficient. And uh, there is there is kind of this dynamic of like your really um, experienced people almost become coaches uh, themselves just by like walking the walk. Like they'll they'll just do an exercise correctly right next to a new person, and a new person just kind of peeks over that at them and is like, "Oh yeah, that's what that is," you know. <laughs> so. Um, I know it sounds crazy. You almost have to see it to believe it, but um, and it was cool. We had we had a couple people from my uh, Vince's mastermind like come down to my seven hundred square foot space just to kind of see the model. Um, because I know a lot of people running this, they they make just to see the madness. Yeah, just to see no the one, no one, everyone didn't believe you like us. They were like, yeah. what? Yeah, I could. I mean, yeah, if you guys want to come down and check it out, I mean, it. I'm not, <laughs> I promise this is exactly how we do it. I'm not. I'm not making it up. Um, and it's really not that chaotic. I know it sounds crazy, but it's, it's, uh, it's not so bad. My one other follow-up to this specific thing is how, and it sounds like you don't have that many one-on-ones at this point, but how do you also fit in the random person doing a one-on-one -on -one in the smaller space? So we just don't schedule it at the same time as a small session. I actually 
have one one on one left between both locations at this point. Oh, okay. So you've um, basically phased it out. Right. And there there were times when I had like three to six people and I would just schedule them uh, either during times that did not have a small group session or I would go to like a not so busy small group session. I would just like take one of the racks and I would be like working with them while my one of my other coaches was running the class. But these, you said the first space was 700, but you outgrew that, right? Both of your two locations now are like 15, 1600 square feet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everything is now about double that size. Okay. And that's kind of right for your model is what you're saying? Or would you, if you did it over, would they be bigger or smaller? You know, I think, I think if I wasn't in the city of Philadelphia, if real estate was a little bit cheaper per square foot, I might, you know, think about 2000, 2500. But uh, as far as just being able to make money, uh, you know, have good profit margins. I, th I think it's just better to stay on that side of things uh, because, you know, if, if, if I'm going into some of these better neighborhoods, like like you guys are in Renton House, I don't think I can get a space for less than like eight grand if I'm going to be on street level. Um, I'm lucky if I find that, you know. So, you know, that makes it a lot harder to charge the right amount per month for a, for a six-on-one model. And, uh, you know, I think I'd rather stay on that that 1500 square foot side of things. How many sessions are you running per day and what does it take to staff fully staff a, a location? So if, if the location's full, we're running about 10 a day, sometimes as few as eight, if it's like a Friday, um, you know, Saturdays we have three. Um, and it takes two coaches, two coaches to staff a location. Uh, essentially the, the, the model or the, the schedule we're rolling with right now, is the facility leader will run sessions from six to 11 and then go home and unless they have assessments or, you know, things they need to do at the gym. And then our assistant coach for that location will show up around three or four and work until about eight, seven, eight o'clock, depending on the day. So two full-time staff members, one's the GM, the other one's like coach and they shift. Uh, right? Yeah. They do shifts. PM shift, yeah. And no one okay. can get sick. No one ever gets. <laughs> well, if somebody sick. got sick, I personally would just kind of step in. Um, with just, with uh, just goes downstairs, just opens the door and goes. Yeah. Well, now I, I bought a house in Philly, and I live eight minutes from every location, so I'm close by. It's really not that big of a deal if I have to get on the floor. Um, but you know, as we're growing here, I've had to start to I've started to plan ahead a little bit. We recently brought a fill-in or floater. Uh, part-time coach on staff and uh it's been it's been great because you know i'll give you i'll give you an example we had one of our facility leaders he competes in mountain biking and like one saturday night i get a text from him he's like dude i fell off my bike i got hurt pretty bad i need emergency surgery i don't know when i'm going to be back in work so you know immediately i'm texting our our uh, part-time filling coach and he's like i got you monday tuesday and wednesday but thursday i can't so um so you know, I'm ready to step in Thursday and Friday, but luckily Thursday morning, uh, our facility leader was in a sling ready to coach. He couldn't wait to get out of the house. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, two things there, right? Like he's awesome. I can't believe, you know, three days after surgery, he's like back working, but I was prepared to give him the whole week off. Uh, but, um, and also just having, having our part-time coach ready to go, um, you know, it was a huge help and I didn't have to, you know, run around like a chicken with my head cut off that week. And how are you recruiting people? Who are you looking for? And especially as you're starting to do the, the next location. So we mostly uh, hire from within. Uh, there's actually only one coach or one like coach or facility leader who's on staff uh, that, uh, that did not do our internship program. So we have, you know, we have like a 12 week curriculum. We put them through the internship program. And I find this is a really great way to figure out like what somebody's all about. Um, you know, and then, you know, if we have space on our, on our team, we, you know, we will hire through the internship program. If not, we'll just kind of keep them in our, on a list. And, uh, you know, when it's time to hire again, we'll, we'll reach out, we'll let them know that there's an open spot. And, you know, usually it's, it's between, you know, two interns. And they fight to the death. Battle. That's it. Of the, and then uh, yeah. to answer your question about the third location, it's one of, one of our assistant coaches, our assistant coach for Queen Village. She is actually just going to move over to Logan Square and become the facility leader there. And I got to say, it's a pretty listening to what some other guys in the group do uh, as far as like hiring facility leaders and onboarding them. This is a much easier process. I know it's harder 
to wait two years and like really uh, groom somebody, get them ready. Um, but but yeah, like just kind of opening a location with her is going to be so easy because she already knows how the business works. Um, she already knows like how things go. And it's just, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be challenges, but I can't imagine how much harder it would be if it was somebody just off the street. Right. Cause she understands the culture and can kind of implant it there. Yeah. Also being in the same city definitely helps cause you can walk over, keep an eye on things. Yeah. All right. So 10 sessions sounds like a lot. It does. Um, like does. Queens village is like your flagship, right? Queen village. Um, what, like how many members do you have there? So we have one this morning, we had 132 active members. Uh, and, and yeah, you're right. Sometimes like the 7 PM gets canceled. Um, we offer it cause I'm constantly looking at like, uh, you know, capacity and I don't want to have, I don't want to be like Planet fitness and have like more memberships than space. You know, so I, I make sure we have enough time slots so that everybody can get their two, three or four times a week in. And, uh, you know, sometimes people just don't come and then like, you know, like the 3 PM or the 7 PM just won't happen. And, uh, I'm okay with that. It's, you know, it, it's probably, uh, you know, you're right. 10 is a little high, but, um, and it's something that we're always working on. I think I, I've never really gotten a perfect schedule. You know, there's always like one or two things that are wrong with it. And, you know, as the seasons change, you have to constantly be adapting with that. And so, uh, how is the second one doing? Is that similar size, the Kensington one? Similar size space. Uh, that's got about 82 members right now. Uh, so we still have some work to do. Uh, and, and the story I tell with this one is, you know, I was cocky. I was, what was it? Uh, it was uh, February 2020. And then for the pa the year prior, I was kind of chatting with one of my uh, clients, one of my one-on-one -on -one clients that actually started with me in those apartment bedroom days. And they were redeveloping this building in uh, in East Kensington. And, and uh, they were like, hey, we're, we're going to have a commercial space. You should move your gym over here. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, I can't move from Queen Village to East Kensington. I'm going to lose everybody. I have like, at the time I had like 70 clients and I was like, I really don't want to just like, you know, forget about all these people and, you know, miss out on all this, you know, everything I've built so far. Um, so I decided to open a second one, <laughs> which is totally, I know now is totally not the way to do it. Um, you know, you should have your first one figured out before you go and take the leap with number two. And it's something we have encountered many a time on this show and in life. So we totally, it happen, we totally happens understand. to the best of them every yes. <laughs> I wish, yeah, I wish, you know, I, I wish I could tell everybody thinking about that not to do it because yes. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it, and if you I, ask anybody, like, like, had you sought counsel, everyone would have told you that's a terrible idea, but you would have done it anyway. That's also so, true. Uh, yeah, I can't explain it. It's uh, I can't tell you how many people will be like, "Hey, can, I'm thinking about opening this second location. Can I pick your brain?" And you know, I'll, I'll give them a call and be like, "I'm just like, no, don't do it. It's a bad idea. You're not ready." And and a hundred percent of the time, they just say thanks and then immediately open the second location. I think I quietly because I was in Vince's group when I was doing this, like all oh, about all this is going on, and I just didn't talk about it, so nobody had the opportunity to tell me to stop you. Idea. Yeah, okay, that's. Yeah. I knew it was a bad idea, and I just I still did it because again, cocky, young, thinking I you know I'm invincible and nothing bad can happen. Um, then, so I signed the lease in February of 2020, and we all know how that went. <laughs> legend, legend. So, <laughs> February 2020 was a great month for gym leases because I feel like everybody did that. I know, I'm sure it's a common story. Uh, February, so February 2020, I signed the lease. Uh, you know, March we get shut down, and March my security deposit gets deposited. <laughs> I I, uh, I tell the story of um, you know I had paid off like my my uh, credit card, and that 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 check got cashed on the same day. So somehow I ended up with like a couple thousand dollars left in my, my checking account. And I was like panicking, right? Because I'm like, we're going to be shut down for two weeks. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, again, don't have number one. Oh, yeah. Out. Two weeks to stop the spread. Yeah. 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 Two weeks. No revenue. It was just two, through two, three weeks. That's it. Yeah. And then in Philly, it turned into, you know, July, I think was, was when they started letting us open. Um, so it was tough. I, um, you know, luckily, I that, that forced me to grow up really fast, learn a lot about my financials, 
I just took on a lot of credit card debt until like the government loans really kicked in. And I just tried to manage my cash as best as I could, you know, keep, keep some sort of service going the whole time so that I can have some income. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, like I said, COVID gave me the opportunity to reset, restructure things. Cause I was like, man, this just isn't working. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm on a one way trip to nowhere if I just keep going the way I'm going. So a uh, small group was the way to go. We switched to a six on one model, uh, you know, really invested in, um, you know, some paid ads and, uh, you know, a better website with, uh, with, with kiss marketing and, and uh, that was that was a game changer for me. We we don't really go more than a week without five leads from our website. So I want to talk about marketing actually, because looking at your gym and even the branding a little bit, it does kind of it looks like a college strength gym. Like it, there's chains, right. there's squat racks, sornex, and even the logo. You got the big biceps. So on one hand, it looks like you know it's for a collegiate level sports. And yet, if you scroll through your your Instagram or your Google My Business, it's you know everyday people. And I've noticed specifically a lot of women leaving positive reviews, being like, you know, I had this preconceived notion about strength training, but you know, I've been going and hanging out with G, and it's the mo- my life has changed. You know, it's incredible. So, how are you able to bridge that gap between you know that facility that looks like a collegiate level place, but uh, a gym that's welcoming for you know all people? And you're getting, you know, all people going in there. Uh, it's funny. It's funny you bring that up. My dad took one look at my logo and was like, "You'll never train women with that logo." <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> the case in point. Take I'm that, happy. Dad. Look, it's a woman. Train. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to say we are like 60 percent women at both locations. That's what it seemed like from your socials and your reviews, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I um, I don't know. I think. You know, I haven't really put my my finger on it entirely. I think it's just all our marketing. You know, at least in the past year, I've, I've kind of grown up and, and decided like, okay, we're just going to go all in on beginners because that's the, those are the people that are the best clients and those are the people that we can help the most. Um, so we're just going all in on beginners, and uh, all our content is just going to be centered around like helping beginners, making them feel comfortable in the gym, and uh, and I think it's working. <laughs> I, I just kind of decided to focus on that demographic and, uh, you know, that, that's really, um, it's, it's not much more complicated than that. I don't think I don't really, I don't, I don't do much more marketing other than, uh, you know, our social media. Uh, we ask for a ton of referrals and, uh, we just get a ton of Google reviews, um, just from asking. And I, I think that goes a long way in driving people towards our website and our website converts pretty well. So then I guess what's the offer when you, when you, when you get a prospect or a lead, you call them up, uh, what's the sales process like? So r- right now it's, um, you know, it's just a free one-on-one assessment, but, uh, you know, when we, when we were hurting for, for leads and we were hurting for conversions, we, we, we went with like this, uh, kind of loaded trial, uh, approach we would, so our, our memberships around at the time it was like around two fifty. So we, we, we would do like a trial for 30 days or for 28 days for one fifty, and they would get a one-on-one personal training session. They would get a one-on-one nutrition consultation, like a, like almost like a zoom call with, with one of our coaches. And then they would get, um, eight small group personal training sessions. So they would be able to come to eight classes in addition to that all for one fifty, And that worked really Jesus. well for us for a while. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty good deal. <laughs> right. And then like, we got so busy that I was like, man, I don't know if we need to do this anymore. Like <laughs> this is a lot of work. Let's, let's just like see what happens when, you know, after a year and a half of that, we were just like, let's just see if we can sell people right into membership. So, um, you know, we have the free one-on-one so they can just come do the assessment, meet with a coach. We put them on Zen Planner. We put them on Team Builder so that we teach them how to use our, our apps and stuff. And then, um, and yeah, we sell them right into membership and it's it's been going pretty well. So, um, like, now you got your unit dialed in because like obviously i'm hoping you stabilize the second gym before you go into your third one here um you know like what it, what does it look like top line revenue for um you know your, your main one and your small one so so my main one is um is that you know it, we capped out at like 140 members uh over the summer we could probably touch 150 uh our best revenue month was was 41k our average is right around 39 uh, a month over in Queen Village, 
and uh, profit margins there are about ten, twelve thousand a month. And then um, our East Kensington location is actually, even though it only has eighty-two members, it's still profitable, um, but still a lot of capacity there. Uh, there's about four grand a month in profit and top line revenue. Best month was twenty-seven k. Uh, average is around twenty-four. But, but yeah, it's, it's, it's producing about 4,000 a month in profit. And, um, and yeah, I think it's in a good place, but, uh, I think I forgot to say this when I was t- telling the story of opening it up, it, it just, we picked a bad location really, or I picked a bad location. Um, I, I got cocky. I was like, it's near Fishtown. It's starting to gentrify. It's starting to really develop. I, th- I see the vision there. Uh, but I just got over there too early and it was like on a back street, not good foot traffic. And uh, still lots of construction going over there. So it's really hard to find us. Um, but we're yeah, making it we work. were there, it was the hood. Like, you didn't right. you didn't go around there. Uh, that wasn't No, like, we went out there. It was like all the cool you bars You go to, like, Fishtown to, like, go to, like, yeah. a warehouse party or something. All the cool bars were there. You, all the cool stuff was would, there. The you definitely food. did not go live well, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it looks sweet. Like, the location looks cool. Yeah, like, it's awesome. Again, oh, yeah. Philly's just like got all these old warehouses, so it's got all this sweet looking exposed brick. Yeah, Fishtown um, is like uh, is very developed now. It's actually very expensive to get over there, and that's part of the reason why I haven't moved. Because like if I moved this location, I would have gone over to Fishtown. Uh, again, more developed, more people are living over there. Uh, but because we got to like around 50, 60 members at the time that it was you know time to renew the lease, I was like. Yeah, we did the hard part. Let's just keep going. You know, <laughs> it's expensive to move. Like, let's just, and we got a good community over here. I'm not going to mess with it. So it's stable, but uh could be better is how I, how I talk about it. What's crazy to me about these like small group training models is like the, the top line isn't crazy, right? Like even the, the crazy ones are, you know, it sounds like 40 is kind of the number everybody's shooting for on that. But um like but they just, they're all profitable. Like everybody we've talked to who's running this model uh, that can manage to get a hundred members in the gym, like they're doing way better than the average gym owner. Um, why, what is it about the model? Like, what is it about it that makes it work better than what a lot of other people are trying? It's just so simple. Like it's just, um, there's less pieces, there's less moving parts, uh, less people to manage. And if you really, if you just, you know, if, if you pick a location with, with the right you know, number for rent, uh, if, if you're able to manage payroll as you grow properly, uh, you know, keep it around 30, 35 percent, you know, you'll be fine. You'll be you'll be profitable sooner than uh, than most gyms would be. Um, you know, I'm seeing, you know, I know Devin, it takes like two, three months for him to get profitable, which is, you know, I'm not quite that fast, but but that that's um, well, it's awesome. Yeah, they're spinning those up, and then it just seems like they're cash flowing uh, almost immediately, which is which is crazy. Just running a you know a discount of founders membership, maybe a couple like challenge based ads, and and then once you once you hit that like fifty sixty mark, you're you're cooking with oil out there. Every incremental member after that is just um, you know you're making money on that. It's a great it's a great model. I'm I. Uh... You know, I, I think everybody should probably do it. It's, <laughs> I mean, depending on your area and, and all that, but, uh, but it's a, you know, I, I, uh, I moved, I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, I got to move to this. This is the way to go. Everybody in the group who's like, you know, smarter than me, been doing it longer than me is moving towards the six on one or small group in some capacity. Um, and I, and I was like, I, I just, it's so simple, so easy to manage. It just makes so much sense. And so what's the plan for you? Are you, uh, are you looking to open a hundred of these? Are you like, what, how, how old are you, by the way? I, I just turned 30. Um, you just turned 30. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Incredible. And so, yeah, what's the, you got some time on your hands here. What, what's the, what's the plan? I mean, I've definitely, uh, I've definitely slowed down as far as like uh, setting goals, like, like a hundred gyms or anything like that. I don't, I don't know if that's what I want. I, I know I want f- at least four, um, you know, I, I guess, I guess you could say I'm just taking a one gym at a time, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think, I think, you know, I have a really good quality of life right now. Uh, I just had, uh, me and my wife just had a, had a daughter six months ago. So Congrats. congratulations. Thanks. So that, that's, um, definitely changed my mindset, uh, with, you know, how much, 
how much I want to be working, how much I want to be focused on my business moving forward. It rattles you, man. It rattles you. Yeah, I was like, this is kind of hard. And if we plan on, you know, having having more kids, like <laughs> I don't know if I should be opening gyms while, you know, while we're going through this. This is not a good idea. So, um, so yeah, I think I think my goal right now is four gyms. Um, but after that, um, I think I'm going to be a little bit more focused on, you know, investing in other avenues. Um, maybe real estate. Uh, I, I'm really not sure yet. I'm, like I said, I just turned 30. So, you know, I, I've got some time to figure this out, but. And uh, when were you doing lift? How old were you? I was, that was 20, I was 23. So it was just seven years from doing lift to two gyms with almost 200 grand a year coming to the bottom line. Yeah. <laughs> pretty- and that if you would have stayed in uh, college strength and conditioning, like what is it, you know, seven years in college strength and conditioning is nothing, right? Like you're not getting head coaching jobs with seven years experience, right? Like you're, you're still making 35 grand on the floor, 10 hours a day, like getting punted to a new location every two years. Right. For sure. It's a grind. Yeah. Those guys work harder. Those guys are beasts. They're animals. You got to be some type of broken and weird to pursue that. But man, uh, pow- bless him and power to him. Like to to have that type of passion about something to be able to to go through that. Um, but yeah, it's that's a that is a hard that is a hard path. It's like take gym ownership, which is very very difficult, and let's just figure out a way to make it even harder. That's like the the college strength community. All right, so if you're advising, uh, you know the 23 year old version of yourself. Cause I'm sure you get people asking you like, Hey, asking you for mentorship. How do I do this for myself? Like what, what advice would you give them? I would tell them start with the small group model and charge enough, uh, do the math as far as like, start with how much you want to make, kind of do the math with your expenses and figure out, you know, what's that number that I need to be charging a month to, um, you know, to be able to, to, to make the amount of money that I, I want to be able to have the kind of life I, I would like. And yeah, start, start small. Don't, you know, don't bite off more than you can chew in the beginning. You know, don't, 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 don't fucking rent like a five, 5,000 square foot gym when you don't have any clients um, and no plan and no marketing in place. I think, uh, you know, start in that apartment bedroom or that garage, you know, <laughs> whatever that is for you, um, you know, learn the basics in that kind of environment. So you have like room to fail. I, I mean, I actually started helping a lot of guys uh, who are in Vince's group that, that live in the Philly area and, you know, we're always talking about, you know, a, a lot of, a lot of that like stage one stuff. So like when you're, when you're running the gym and you're doing all the training yourself, you know, f- figuring all that out, what are the basics? Like, what are the things that you need to do to kind of move you forward? And, and, uh, you know, from a marketing standpoint, I just, I just tell them like, keep asking for referrals, keep asking for Google reviews, uh, and just, you know, be the best part of everybody's day, you know, like get on the floor and just, you know, put on a show. So you, you brought up referrals three times now, and that's not something any other guest has really talked about. Do you have like a, a secret sauce for at, Like, how do you ask for referrals? What's your referral system? Like if you're a gym owner who wants more referrals, what do you do? Hmm. Uh, so we, we automate it. We, we, we send out a text message on like day 30 of everybody's membership. Like, Hey, is there any, there's anybody else that in your life that could benefit from, you know, working with us, you know, or like you've gotten great results. Is there anybody in your life that you would like, you know, to, to share that with? And, um, you know, we'll do, we'll do things like that. And, you know, we'll, we'll both send a text message and ask in person during sessions. But I think the biggest thing we do every year during the holidays is we do that holiday gift card, uh, totally Vince's idea. And that's actually what got me hooked on his mastermind is he has like these black metal cards and uh, he passes them out to all his members and he's like, you know, here's a free week. Here's a free month, free personal training session, whatever you want it to be, whatever offer you want to roll out there for a friend, gift it to him for the holidays. And you just give it to all of your members. And because it's like this big, like heavy metal card, like it's, it's pretty substantial. And people are like, okay, this means something like they, they gave me some, something worth, worth, uh, you know, this has a lot of value. So, uh, the first time I did this back in, uh, 2018, I think it was the, yeah, it was the winter of 2018 going into Christmas. I got like, I went from 70 members to hundred members just from doing that one thing. And, just from uh, that? Wow. Just from that. Yeah. What was That's your huge. offer? It was a free month, two times a week. Okay. So people, wow. yeah. And you, you put these cards in a box or something? 
Or they just yeah. Well, I, I actually I, I went really cheap the first year, but it worked the best. <laughs> I went I went to Vista Print, got like white cards with my logo on it, and said two times a week. And then on the back, it said uh, to and from. <laughs> there it and is. It, Keep it simple. Put the the member's name in there, and then yeah, that was it. And so now, what do you do? Now what do I, uh, I, I, w- I went to go to this website called My Metal Business Cards, and and uh, it's just like a nicer version of that. They're like they're heavy. They're <laughs> they double as like ankle weights. <laughs> oh my god! The visual show, you know. Yeah. If you're listening on the podcast. We appreciate you, but uh, come on over to YouTube. We're having a great time. <laughs> oh yeah, right. these look yeah. nice. And so it looks. You get it all done up like that. It looks real fancy. The executive pack. This looks like. Uh, yeah, fifty yeah. quick metal. Yeah, all right. I see it. I see it. I see it. You see and then they give, it, they give it to their they give it to their friends, and their friends show up. And do they present you the card? Sometimes they do. Like they they feel guilty about keeping it. Like a lot, I've had a lot of people like, do you want me to bring the card back? <laughs> like, yeah, because it's like, what? What if I use it twice? Are you keeping yeah. track? <laughs> no, I don't care. I, I want you to refer more. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but if they do bring it back, I'll just, you know, I'll use it next year. I'll give it to somebody else. But um, I just plan on ordering 100 of these every year uh, for every gym. And and then um, it works pretty well. I, it'll, it'll give you like at least, you know, five five people. Easy. There's a secret VIP list for Kilo. Maybe we'll, we'll make them some black metal, some black cards. I don't know how they'd present it because we're a virtual company. But, um, you know. Everybody. Yeah, we can, I'm still down to try it. We have yeah, a shenanigans I'm, budget, so. That can yeah. go in there. Yeah. yeah there you yeah, go. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Send it in a nice you get box. Something, you get something from the show every week. There you have it. <laughs> and then, uh, all right, so that's a cool promo. And then you talked about the GMB stuff. How do you go about that? You know, because you, you do have, you have like 250. You have a lot of reviews. On, a lot of reviews. 226 on one, 123. You got 19 on the one that isn't even open yet. It's literally just like a concrete, it's like a photo of a concrete pad. <laughs> Like oh, <laughs> this place changed my life. <laughs> I think I think it's just, from the um, building inspector. <laughs> I think just incentivizing people who are already coming to you to just write reviews by by like, um, you know, giving them gifts. I I'll I'll like buy a bunch of t-shirts and I'll just put the box in the middle of the gym and I'll be like, write us a review, get a free shirt. So you know, we we do a lot of things uh, to get people excited about writing reviews because. They tell us every day, but the, the act of like going and writing it on Google is hard for some people. They're busy, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, and they forget. Uh, you know, they got to pick their kids up or whatever it is. So we try to, um, you know, create a sense of urgency. Like, there's only 50 shirts. You know, like the first 50 people that do it. You know, I know that's not like, you know, I don't, I don't know if Google frowns upon that, but you know. It's worked so far. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, it's technically against terms of service, but we did the exact same thing. We wanted to stack our pages with Google. I know reviews. Yelp. This is the reason I don't use Yelp anymore because they, I like put up a post because I didn't know it was illegal like, or not illegal, but I didn't know it was frowned upon. So I said, no, like, definitely against terms of service. Yeah, they don't want so. you. They don't want you doing exactly what you're doing. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, for for Yelp, I did like, uh, you know, the best review gets a free month or something like that. And they took a screenshot of my post and put it on my Yelp page. And we're like, this this business, you know, incentivizes people to write good reviews, just so you're aware. And I, I got like 50 reviews and they said all of them were illegitimate. So like my Yelp page now only has like three reviews. Um, but that's why I don't use them. Who, who ratted you out? Who narked? Yelp. I think I actually, so I, this is how little I knew. I think I actually tagged Yelp on the post. Oh, well, okay. Wow. So, yeah, was, uh, okay, that's a small just, brain move. Just <laughs> performing yeah. seppuku, just <laughs> absolutely <laughs> on the goal. Okay. All right, yeah. so Yelp was a big thing when we were operating, uh, and I don't think it is anymore. I don't, I don't know if anybody still uses it. I think Teo still uses it. But one of the I things that we did it. that was, was helpful is like export all the emails from like your gym management software and then create a personal Yelp account. And then I would upload those saying like, that's my friend list. Cause, cause Yelp would be like, add your, find your friends on Yelp. So you could, it's a social thing. So I'd upload all the gym members. And so that way you could see which members were uh, like active on Yelp because like, I don't know exactly how the algorithm works anymore, but like an elite review is worth like 10 times the weight of a, a normal schlubs review. 
And so being in Philly, it's a bunch of, you know, you got some elite Yelpers there. In New York, we had people who just like all they did was go to restaurants and review stuff. And so you just like that would give you your list of like the 10, 15 people who like it actually mattered. Because if you have someone who's not active on Yelp, they leave you a review, it's going to be dog shit. And Yelp's just going to put it to that bottom of the page like the, the, the they're going to they're going to hide it. But with the elite people, um, that thing's sticking. So that's my little hack. P- put your member list through your Yelp page, find the elite people and, and you know, be, be kind of nice to them. Take them out, take them out to a drink, take them out to coffee. And, you know, say, Hey, <laughs> I notice, you're pretty, a- notice you're pretty active on Yelp. Notice you're pretty active on Yelp. We got a Yelp page. Do you like what we do here? <laughs> Maybe the communicate, the community would benefit from, uh, from knowing about it. Right. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I'll look One of our it. members left us a four star. I'm still salty about it. He was an elite Yelper. He left us a four star and our local Taco Bell got five stars. So that should tell you about what he thought of the service we were delivering. Who did that? Uh, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to dox him on the show. I, we can it, wasn't it. Bowery, it wasn't a Bowery number. It. Okay. it wasn't a Bowery number. Yeah. I, I remember I was paying like 300 bucks a month to market with Yelp and they pulled that shit while I was giving the money. I was like, are you guys stupid? Like, <laughs> I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I like, <laughs> I pulled, I pulled all the marketing like the next, you know, the next week. Um, but uh, it is what it is. Google's working just fine. Google, you're doing, um, you're doing paid ads. I was for a little bit. I'm not uh, currently. I'm, I'm actually not doing anything. I'm, uh, I was doing like a little bit of Facebook, a little bit of SEO, a little bit of Google ads, and, uh, and I just really wasn't. And I was just doing this at the East Kensington location, and I really wasn't happy with the quality of lead we were getting from uh, from Facebook. Uh, and I wasn't really able to quantify like Google SEO or any of that. So I was like, you know what? Let's just take a stab at it. Uh, you know, go old school, get out in the community, talk to people, and and try and do it that way. So so like this past the past uh, two weeks to a month, I've been just getting out in the community, trying to do a bunch of. Uh, cross promotion joint venture joint venture type stuff with with local businesses and and honestly the uh the the member number on the scoreboard has has been about the same so much less ad spend much less uh, the expenses are going down and you know we're getting the same results so i think i think i'm only a month in but i think i think it's going to be uh the way we go so moving forward at the east kensington location yeah, it seems like you know how to scramble and hustle and and work the DMs and do all that. It seemed, if you, if you got that skill, you you really only need that. You don't need the other stuff. A lot of I I have this theory is you if you're a successful gym owner, you only really need to rock one channel. Like most of the people that we talk to, they specialize in one of them. Like just all in Facebook ads, just all in cold outreach, just all in JV. Um and so it sounds like if if you if you know how to if you know how to talk to human beings in a, in a dense area like you are, you can, you can get a pretty long way with it. Go- and I think I just have the advantage of I'm from here. I've, grew, I've spent my whole life here except for college, you know, so I, I have a lot of relationships in the community and, you know, I just, I just kind of know how a lot of the neighborhoods work. And um, yeah, it's, just, it's made it a lot easier for me for sure. Um, that being said, I will still use paid ads when I open the third one. I'm definitely going to run a pre-sale and do all that. But, um, but for now, this is, this is working pretty well. It's definitely pretty helpful to jumpstart a location. You kind of, yeah. you kind of need it, I think. But yes, makes sense. If you like money, and if you're listening to Jim World, we know one thing about your audience: you like <laughs> money. <laughs> so, gee, this has been awesome, man. Where uh, do people go on the internet if they want to learn more about you? I would say social media is a great Yelp. spot. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> uh, social media is a great spot. My personal is uh, at Real G Strength, and then um, my gyms is at G Strength Philly, and our website is www.g-strength.com. That's it for this week's Gym Worldwide. Be sure to leave a hateful comment and unsubscribe. Until next week, bless you, Gym World. Yeah.